Welcome to Reddit Aliens. Hikers, outdoorsmen, campers, what's the eeriest thing you've come across while in the wilderness? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. Not mine, but my uncle told me a good one. He was hunting in Sowakali, Pennsylvania, and came across a clearing with a dead deer that had an arrow in it. He walked over wondering why it was left there, and then realized the arrow was made entirely of glass, even the fletching. Clearly, someone killed the deer, and then stuck the arrow in it, but why would someone do that? Anyway, it weirded him out, and he left. Alright, here we go. I got multiple from when I camped with my family as a kid. 1. I was heading to the river with my dad to brush my teeth, and my dog was really jumpy and nervous for some reason, looking around and staring at the ground. It wasn't until we were walking back did we finally see what she was trying to warn us about. A long ass bluish gray water snake leapt at me and slivered just in between my legs as my dad snatched me away and carried me the rest of the way back to our tents. I was five. Two. Another time, when I was closer to ten, I was camping with my friend with both our families and we decided to do some exploring around these giant rocks. After a while of wandering away from our chatting parents and our tents, they let us wander off as long as we were together, buddy system. We could vaguely hear the sound of rushing water. We were excited to run down the pebbly hill to the river and maybe splash around a bit. That was until we heard a low, gruff, rumbling noise that sounded aggressively agitated and it coming from the same direction as the river. I had a bad feeling, and so did my friend. We didn't know what it was, but we turned tail and ran back to our campsite. Later on, we found out it was a bear after our neighboring campers had their tents attacked and food stash raided by one. The tracks led right back to the river, in the exact same area of the river shore that we had heard the sound come from. More of the story, be careful around rivers. Copy and pasting from a post I've made before. I've spent my life in Georgia and love hiking all over, but I must admit North Carolina has the best mountains. For this reason, I frequently drive up there and hike and camp. This time, I went up with my family in an RV and stayed with them in Maggie Valley. The next day, however, I had them drop me off about 10 miles away at the Cold Mountain Trailhead and I planned to hike up, spend the night, and be back down in the morning. I was by no means inexperienced at hiking or camping, but I'd never camped alone. On top of that, I didn't bring a pistol, something I won't go without now. On the way up, the trail was surprisingly strenuous, not necessarily steep. I've hiked some steep stuff out west, but more like a ton of ups and downs and feeling like it wouldn't end. Eventually, it began to get darker and I realized I needed to stop and set up while I still had light. So I stopped about half a mile short of the summit and figured I would continue in the morning. Nothing eventful happened, I set up camp in a really good spot, ate my food, and went into the tent. At this point, I realized I hadn't run into a single other person my entire way up. This wasn't eerie at the time, but soon would be. I have trouble sleeping, and usually lay awake for up to an hour trying to sleep. During this, I thought I heard someone lightly walking around the general area because of the rhythm of the steps. I brushed it off as my mind running wild but I did pull my big old knife out of my bag and put it next to me in the sleeping bag. That morning, I woke up and ate oatmeal. As I ate, I looked over at my tent and noticed a strange bundle of dried twigs and berries tied with green cord propped against my tent. I'll see if I can find a picture and put it in the comments. Internally, I was pissing myself, but I packed my crap off and took off within five minutes. And no way I bothered going to the summit. I headed straight down. On the way down, I realized there was a pretty heavy fog, and I ended up on a side trail that eventually ended and I was lost. I used the compass to eventually reorient myself and found the trail again, one of the biggest relieves. I made it out with no other incident. However, come to find out, the same morning, a 27-year-old died in the same section of trail as me, and it's possible I would have run into him had I not gotten lost and rejoined the trail later. His family seems to have scrubbed the internet of several of the articles on him, but I'll see if I can find something. The scariest part was knowing that someone knew where I was and watched me and I had no clue about them. Also, the circumstances surrounding the guy's death are weird. You can find articles about him. He supposedly fell trying to climb out of a ravine, but was away from his backpack and had called 911, but didn't get to speak to anyone on the line.
So what do you guys make of this story and the bundle of twigs and sticks outside of the tent? Supernatural, creepy human, or maybe that fateful person who lost his life? Half a mile deep in the woods behind my middle school, a group of students found a gnawed human bone in a shoe. A search was called for some poor soul whose remains had likely been scattered by an animal, much deeper in the forest. They find the remains of a guy who had blown his head off with a shotgun. The search and rescue guy, whose team found him, told our class that the only visible remaining parts of his face was a piece of mustache. I never got closure on whether or not the two sets of remains were the same body or just different corpses hanging out in the woods. Not to knock my mom at all, but she used to be into drugs, and we lived in rural Indiana, so she would sleep and at times we wouldn't even wake her up so we could go to school. One morning we went out in the woods. We had everything out there, to the point where we would get in trouble. We would bring all of our toilet paper out there and then not have any in the house, LMAO. One time our mom was asleep, and we were out there early. We'd hiked a long way. I sat down on a dead log and a mosquito landed on me. It bit me, and the ground started vibrating. It felt like being in a utility room next to a washing machine. I assumed it was West Nile because I didn't know anything about the disease. In my child mind, you get bit and the symptoms immediately settle in. We went home and my mom demanded to know where we were. Things had started falling off the shelves. It was an earthquake. We lived on a major fault line, but we didn't know it at the time. We had a bunch of tornadoes, but I never imagined we'd have earthquakes. I just thought, West Nile, duh. Growing up, I'd go hiking out in rural Oklahoma without any real concern about property barriers. Every once in a while, I'd happen across a tiny cemetery, usually with concrete headstones. I always assumed they were all that remained of a town that disappeared in the 1930s. I have these woods by my house that are really nice, but also attract some weird people. I've had multiple weird experiences while I was there, but the weirdest was when I was biking with my friend on a rainy day. The trail we were on was paved, but set off a ways from the main trail. The ground was damp and muddy, and we were going pretty slow. We biked past a more open off-road trail and saw a man no more than 20 feet out from us holding an axe, kneeling near a tree stump with his back turned to us and praying under his breath. He had longer, unkept hair and a ratty black raincoat on. The whole thing was really eerie, so we sped away, but out of curiosity, brought us back soon after. We turned out around after biking in the other direction for about two minutes to check back on the spot. When we got there, the man was gone, and there were no footprints in the mud. Some weird men, probably illegally fracking gas while being lost deep in the woods and dehydrated to the point of seeing black spots. One of them asked so many questions clearly to understand whether we've seen what they're doing, whether we understood what was going on, and then whether anyone looking for us you could see gears turning in his head, calculating whether to let us go after what we've seen ended up with us having to run away. It was a weird day. Whoa. A fed bear. They behave, just not naturally. Unfortunately, the occasion ended in an old adage, a fed bear is a dead bear, playing out. I went hunting two years ago with my dad and his best friend, my uncle. Dad and uncle have been hunting for 35 years, moose mostly, sometimes bison or elk or caribou if moose didn't work out that year. So usually they buy a moose tag each, and someone gets an elk tag or whatever just in case. And every time, though they have never needed it, they've each brought a bear tag, one for black and one for grizzly. Where we hunt, you are a full day's travel by boat before you'll see civilization, sometimes two days. The only communication is by sat phone which only works sometimes anyway. Sometimes shit happens out there, and you have to be prepared. Now sure, you can hopefully explain to the COs later that you had to kill that animal you had no tag for in self-defense, and hopefully they'd believe you. But if you just buy a tag, you can know you're safe legally to take whatever measures necessary for protection. But like I said, they've never needed those tags, not in three and a half decades of being out there, despite all their numerous bear encounters. So anyway, Dad knows an outfitter who had a small plywood shack out here down the river about 15 feet by 15 feet maybe. He warns us that a buddy of his recently used the shack and had bear trouble, so we went out to line the outside with corrugated tin. We know our bear safety, and it's bear country all over, 
so we decided to stay. Night one, no problems. However, fresh bear shit on sight. Rifles up and eyes open. Chat out loud all night. Smash big pieces scrap tin together so the ear splitting, snapping booms echo off the hills. Next day. We're up early and out hunting. Not much luck, but we make some friends on the river. They've camped upstream by a slow and usually frequent and we stop the boats to drift and chat a bit. Turns out one of them knows the outfitter whose cabin we are in. He fills us in on a few things. Someone recently used it, had bear trouble, then decided to illegally bait the bear with hot dogs every night for a week in order to lure it into camp so he could shoot it. Only he never committed. He just fed a bear. He made noise and stink and threatening actions, then fed the bear treats, actively teaching it that these things are safe and okay things that will result in food. Well, shit. We do some more traveling upstream, see nothing, back to camp. Trail into camp from the river marked by some spare jerry cans we have full of fuel. One of them has been dragged into the middle of the trail and bitten in two places, punctured several times, and is still leaking, rifles up get into camp. The grub stash got broken into, must not have locked it upright, or the culprit knew what they were doing from experience. Camp is a mess, half the food is gone, some emptied and torn up plastic bags have been cached in a patch of moss behind the shack, and there's debris everywhere. Bear in camp. I'm ahead of dad and uncle, so I call out as soon as I see the mess. There's still ice stuck to some of the bags that had frozen food. This just happened. I know the bear is here. He's likely watching or listening to me right now, as I'm scanning the area unable to see a damn thing. We clean up, lock up tighter, store stuff in the boat, and start pissing everywhere, making more noise, shouting, hollering, smashing tin, foghorn, scare that effer away. I look around more to try to find out what exactly we're dealing with. The ground in camp is all moss and sticks. But if it bit the gas cans at the trailhead, then it may have come down the beach where there was sand. Found the tracks I was looking for, but couldn't decide what they were from. Claws out suggests grizzly, but they were very small prints, and the only clear tracks were going up a steep incline, so it could have been a black trying to grip the sand. That night, it's outside the shack. We hear it walking around. We hear it sniffing the walls from the outside. There's a small porch off the front of the shack. We hear it walking there. We shout to no avail. This is where it sinks in, that we are in big trouble with this bear. It has absolutely no fear of us, none at all. It doesn't care about the noise. It doesn't care that there are several of us. It doesn't care that there are camp smells of our piss and smoke. It has learned that these things are not a threat to it. It has learned that this place has food and that these sounds and behaviors are signals that more food has been brought here and has become available. It's October, in the Arctic. This boy is ready to get a few final big meals in before finding a den for the winter. He is not leaving. All night, the bear circles the shack. Uncle tries to sleep, but can hear the bear sniffing his head from two inches away through the plywood and tin. Dad sleeps. Bear action increases and becomes more daring as the night goes on. Uncle and I try to sleep a bit as well, but it's on and off and light. As the wee morning hours settle in, the bear becomes more aggressive, chuffing, clapping his teeth, pacing around the shack, pacing the porch, sniffing the door and sometimes standing and peering in the windows. It's dark. All we can see is a dark shape out there in the shadows. Uncle and I agree to let dad sleep as much as possible now. He's our best shooter and we want him to be well rested for the inevitable showdown that's coming at dawn, like some horrible Wild West movie. A story with a cliffhanger? On our page? Wild. I'm kind of curious as to what happened, though I have a feeling the end result. Last year in late summer, two friends and myself went camping in BC in a pretty populated campsite. It was supposed to be a super chill evening. We had cooked some food and were sharing a bottle of wine and stayed up late chatting. The time was about 1am. We were probably the only people awake at the site as everything was silent around us. All of a sudden, we hear this thumping, running sound toward us and this feeling of dread sunk into our bones. I've never been more afraid in my life. What was funny was, at first, we thought it was a man, but it must have been huge as the ground itself shook. It was pitch black, and we had lights on around us, so we couldn't see much beyond our area. Whatever it was charged last us at full speed, 
and we heard a huge crash into the river beside our site. We ran and hid in the car and assumed it was a bear. Even now, when we talk about it, we still are not completely sure as nothing could begin to describe the feeling of terror we each felt just before we heard the footsteps. To this day, it was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. Not a very interesting story, but it surprised me. I backpacked with a friend a couple of days in the Catskills. When it got dark, both of us got an eerie, spooky feeling from the woods. We were afraid to leave the tent in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I'm very much not a believer in ghost persons, but it felt there was this presence throughout the woods. I'd dismiss it, but she sensed it too. I backpacked in Texas, Arkansas, and Washington and never felt it anywhere else. Also, we heard this very loud scree sound. We imagined it to be a bear scratching up a tree. We were terrified of bears, but who knows what it actually was. When I was 10 years old, my brother and I were searching for firewood when my brother found a weird white circular shape in the ground with a hole in it. It was mostly buried, and he dared me to pull it out of the ground. Obviously I did, and when I pulled it to the surface, it was half of a human skull. We were young and didn't recognize it at first until we showed my father, who knew exactly what it was. My finger was in the eye socket, which, had I known, I would have been freaked out. He called the authorities, then the FBI was even called out to check it out. They had crime taped seen off everywhere, and my dad knew we weren't supposed to be looking for firewood there, so he was timid. My whole family was pretty much questioned, as it could have been recent. One of the officers said he would keep my dad updated with what they found out. Turns out it was a Native American Indian skull. My dad took a picture while we were waiting for the police to show up. We would still have that picture had I not slipped up being so young and told them my dad took a cool picture, which they made him delete. This happened in Colorado, and it was a Pueblo Indian skull. Hunting a friend's property in August in South Central BC. Kootenay Boundary Region, beautiful and sparsely populated area. When we first arrived, the landowner warned us that he had seen a grizzly there the day before, so we were already on high alert. Anyways, one evening, we sat on the edge of a small valley watching whitetail does on the opposite hillside. It was getting late, 9 p.m.-ish, when the sun set, and we started hiking back to camp. Full moon, late summer, warm. Just a beautiful night. But again, we were on alert for the grizzly, and there was evidence of a mountain lion too. We hiked down a grassed over trail with thick dog hair pines on either side. The full moonlight made eerie shadows. Suddenly, from somewhere close beside the trail in the pines, the most hideous screeching I've ever heard. It was like a woman shrieking, and it happened three or four times. We picked up the pace, rifles off our shoulders, and in our hands for the rest of the hike. Figured out when we got home that it was a fox. My dad and his friend were walking to the hunting stand at like 10 p.m. for a legal pig hunt. It's dark as shit, except the green flashlight beams and silent as the grave. We've seen on the game cameras that there are a few bears. We aren't interested in shooting bears. As they're walking along the wet leaves, not making a sound, behind them, something growls at them. Oh, I have a couple actually. These are the ones I remember from the top of my head. A machete, but it was positioned like someone just lost it, though I stayed paranoid during the entire hike. Forest fire. Like, saw the fire and there was a lot of smoke. Me and my mom got away pretty fast with our spare clothes covered in water on our faces and didn't have any health complications right after. A few years later, returned to the same spot and everything was in charcoal and found a few charred bones on the ground. Worked in Yellowstone and got off work around 10 p.m. Had to walk back to my dorm, which is about a mile or so by the time I go to start hiking is about 11 p.m. Normally, you're not supposed to hike alone or not necessarily at night, especially not alone at night. I like to go alone and hike at night, not only because that's what I like, but also because I had some weed buried at the top of a mountain. So, every night after work, I would hike about two miles up a mountain and unbury my weed, smoke a joint, and hike back down. I did this for around two months, no problems, nothing ever happened, always carried bear spray and a light as well as music, usually, to help ward off animals, and nothing ever happened. One night, I go up to my spot, I'm smoking, 
and I see three headlights coming from the direction of the trail. In my mind, I thought it could be other hikers, or it could be NPS officers, so I decided to turn my red headlight off, but put out my joint and just wait and listen. I waited for about 10 minutes, which was more than enough time for those people to come directly by me on the trail. However, I never saw any lights come by me, and there were no offshoots to the trail they could either come past me or turned around. Didn't really think too much of it, just thought that it was kind of weird, so I went back to smoking my joint, didn't turn my light back on, however. Right as I'm getting to finish my joint, I hear what sounds like either a person or a very large animal break a stick a few feet behind me. At this point, instant fear. I'm thinking, holy shit, this is a mountain lion, this is a moose, this is a bear, and or this is a person that somehow got behind me that I didn't notice. So I slowly put my bear spray in my right hand and move my left hand up to the button on my headlamp. I turn my light on and turn toward the light super fast, as fast as I can turn around with the bear spray in my hand. What do I see? Absolutely nothing. No person, no animal, no nothing. I move my light all around and looking at 360 degrees around me as well, as about maybe 15 feet in every direction. After not seeing anything, then being relatively sure that there was a creature of some sort, I decided to bury my weed, pack up, and get down the mountain as fast as possible. Usually it took me around, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour to get down the mountain. However, that night, I got down in 15 minutes, and didn't go back up alone for about two weeks. After I got comfortable again, I started going back up alone, and nothing else that spooky ever happened. Seems like an awful lot of trouble to smoke a little 420. What do you guys think? How far have you gone to feel a little different? Not creepy realistically, but once while on family vacation in the UP of Michigan, we went rock hunting on Lake Superior. My brother and I were making jokes about it being people soup, since everyone that dies in shipwrecks gets completely preserved in the cold water. The lake is said never gives up her dead, and you can even see them in underwater footage. Later on, I found a small bone that has been washed up. It was all by itself, very white and clean, and looked like it could have been a finger bone. It most definitely was not, but it was very creepy at the time. A buddy of mine is a marine, and was doing an exercise deep in the woods with his unit one day, and he eventually got lost. After walking around for about an hour trying to figure out where he was, he came across three guys and asked them for directions. They pointed him in the direction of his camp and he was able to get back. Shortly after he got back, him and his unit started to pack to leave, so he told his sergeant that there were still guys out in the woods. His sergeant said that he was the last one back and they were waiting on him to leave. He told his buddies about it and turns out that another unit that did exercises in that area way back in the day had three marines go missing. There have been other marines that got lost in the same area, say they had the same experience of running into three guys that pointed them in the right direction. Hurrah.